In this video, I'm going to be looking at hypothesis testing. Now, this is a topic that a lot of you find difficult, and I'm going to try to simplify it as much as I can. Before we go on to do this topic, you must look at binomial distribution. Go back and look at that, perfect it, and it'll make life a little bit easier. Okay, let's go for it. So here I've got a scenario. I've got the variable x, which is basically me rolling the dice and seeing how many sixes I've got. And you should know what this means from binomial distribution. 60 is the number of trials. And here we put the probability of success. Of course, in this case, I put P because that's what I'm testing. We know that probability of getting a six is one over six. But since we're testing it here, we're gonna put P. Okay, so let's add some story to this and maybe some drama to get our understanding around hypothesis testing. Let's say Zishan has come over to my house to play a game of Monopoly. And in total, he had 60 goes with the dice. And he got only three successes. So I've written down here X equals three. And this is called a test statistic. This is what happened when he did this trial. Now let's tell ourselves, if we're gonna have 60 goes, how many successes are we expecting? Of course, you can just do 60 times one over six and you get 10. So we're expecting 10 successes. If we're gonna roll this dice 60 times, we should roughly get 10 successes. But what's happened to Zishan is he's only got three successes. And he's turned around to me and said, my dice is dodgy and he's not happy and he's not gonna play with me again until we get to the bottom of it. So what do I suggest is, Zishan, let's do a hypothesis test. We're gonna put our game of Monopoly on hold and do a small hypothesis test just to find out if what happened to Zishan is dodgy or is it normal. So I've here I've written H0 and H1. What do they mean? H0 is called the null hypothesis. This is what we normally expect it to be. And of course, it's a dice. We normally expect the, the probability of having one over six to be one over six. And H1 is our alternative hypothesis. This is what Zishan is thinking. He didn't get enough sixes, and he's thinking that the probability of getting one over six is definitely less than one over six. So how are we gonna sort this argument out with me and Zishan? Now, remember, he got three successes, the test statistic, which is X equals three. We're going to work out the probability of this happening. So I'm going to work out the probability of getting three or less successes, which is basically, so here I've written out probably X less than equal to three. And this is basically what happened to Zishan. He got three or less successes. And what we're going to say is if the probability of this happening is a tiny number, a small number, or we could say unlikely, then it must be a dodgy dice. And if we work this out and it's not that small, we're going to say it's not a dodgy dice. The probability will stay as one over six. So it really depends on working out probability x less than equal to three. This is the deciding factor. Now I did say if it's small, we're going to accept what Zishan is saying. Reject the H0, which is the null hypothesis, and go on to H1, the alternative hypothesis, and say P is less than one over six. Now, before we carry on and start working that out and checking if it's small or not, what do we need to do? We need to set a boundary. We need to say what is small or not. Because of course, what's gonna happen is we're gonna work it out. Zishan is gonna say that's small and I'll say, no, it's not small enough. So let's go ahead and set that boundary first and that's called the significance level. So here I've put the significance level as 0 0.05. We use the letter alpha to denote the significance level. Okay, so this is our borderline. We're gonna work this out. If it's less than 0 0.05, meaning the, this being really unlikely, then we're gonna reject HO and we're gonna go to H1 and Zishan will be right. But if it's not small enough, meaning not unlikely enough, uh, so basically being bigger than 0 0.05, then I'm going to be right. And we're gonna stick with H0, which is P is still one over six. So let's just write this method out so we know what we're going for. 
So here I've written out reject h naught. So what I'm saying, if the product x less than or equal to three is small, meaning less than 0 0.05. So right now Zishan is hoping that it comes out less than 0 0.05. And you should be able to work this out on your calculator. You should have just used your binomial distribution function on your calculator. Your n being 60, your p being 1 over 6, and using the binomial cd, your x being 3. And we've got our result. The answer is 0 0.00635. Zishan is happy right now because it's less than 0 0.05, meaning what happened to him is unlikely and he's right, the dice is slightly dodgy. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna reject the fact that P equals one over six, which is our H naught, and accept our alternative hypothesis, which is P is definitely less than one over six. So we simply now just say there's evidence to reject H naught and accept H one. P is less than one over six. Okay, so that wasn't too difficult. Now. I'm going to change the scenario a little bit. Let's say that I roll the dice and I got too many successes. Again, what's too many successes? Well, we need to always check on what's normal. So just do n times p, in this case, 60 times p. So 60 times 1 over 6 is 10. We're expecting 10 successes. Okay, so we want to look at a scenario where you get too many now. Let's say I got 15 successes. So I've changed my test statistic to 15. And of course the H1 should be different in this case because when we had two less successes, we said P is less than one over six. So of course, if I've got too many successes, we're gonna go for P is more than one over six. Okay, so this is our new scenario. Now I've got too many successes. So Zishan is this time gonna to say to me that I'm using a dodgy dice. It must be biased because I've got too many successes and we'll do another hypothesis test to check if my dice is indeed dodgy or is it a normal dice. So this is what we did last time. We said reject h of probability x less than or equal to three because we've got two less. So we're gonna need to change that up a little bit. So of course, because I've got too many successes, we did probability x more than 15. We worked out the probability of anyone getting 15 or more successes. And we're gonna check, is it dodgy? Is it unlikely? Of course, if it's unlikely, meaning less than 0 0.05, then we're gonna reject H naught and say Zishan is right, it must be a dodgy dice and the probability must be more than one over six. So let's do the test again. We'll keep the same significance level, that borderline to decide if it's unlikely or is it normal as 0 0.05. Now to work out the probability of X more than equal to 15 can't be done your calculator right away. And you should know from binomial distribution that you need to change this up. You need to make it one minus pod x less than or equal to 14. Because pod x more than or equal to 15 is exactly the same as doing one minus pod x less than or equal to 14. You need to do this because you can clear only does cumulative function, which is less than or equal to values. And look at that. It was a close call and it was just about not low enough it's over 0 0.05, so it's not unlikely. So we can't reject HO. So Zishan has failed in this case, and my 15 goes stands as normal. So we simply conclude, there is insufficient evidence to reject H naught. So we accept that P is still one over six. Now, so far I've done two examples. One where we did not get enough successes, and one where we've got too many successes. And for both scenarios, we did a hypothesis test and it wasn't too difficult. Just remember, just because you've got two little successes does not mean that the probability has changed. And of course, if you've got too many successes, doesn't mean doesn't mean the probability has changed. You need to do a hypothesis test to see indeed if the probability has changed. Now, the two examples I've done just now can be done in a slightly different way. It's called the critical region method. Now, my preference is the methods I've just used now, but sometimes you, you need to do a critical region method because a question tells you use a critical region method or find the critical region. 
So we still need to look at how to do this question using critical region method. So let's go ahead and do that now. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.